Daniel is the latest book of the Hebrew Bible. Right? It, was, it was chronologically the latest book, written between 167 and 164 BCE. But the author writes in code. He writes in code so that, you know, some hostile person would not be able to understand. Right? The author disguises con his references to contemporary historical events and personalities in these visions, these symbolic visions, that are attributed to a remote era of the past. All right, let's go back and look at the contents of these two sections. In chapters 1 through 6, Daniel is represented as a loyal Jew who's living in the exile in Babylonia. Right, sixth century exilic period among idol worshippers. He refuses to bow down to any other god. He observes the dietary laws and he prays facing Jerusalem. He seems to occupy a position of some honor in the court. He has the power to interpret dreams and to predict the future. And although he's severely tested, he remains true to Yahweh and Yahweh aids him in more than one miraculous escape from danger. The main themes of this first section of the book of Daniel are Daniel's interpretations of the dreams of, of these kings, um, Nebuchadnezzar, and his uh, allegiance to his God. In chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream of a huge statue. It has a head of gold, it has a torso and arms of silver, the belly and the thighs are of bronze, the legs are of iron, and the feet are of mixed iron and clay. And in a minute, we're going to have another symbolic dream that's going to use animals to represent the same things that are being represented here by the metals. So you have this statue with these metal and iron and clay feet. Then a great stone that's uncut by human hands flies from heaven and smashes the clay feet of the statue, and the statue crumbles, and this stone becomes a mountain that fills all the earth. Daniel decodes the dream's symbolism, and it's a historical symbolism, the march of history. Each metal represents a kingdom that ruled the ancient Near East. Daniel only explicitly mentions gold as Babylon, but we can figure out the rest. Silver is Medea, bronze is Persia, and iron is Alexander's Greece, right? Macedonian Greece that conquered the ancient Near East in the 330s and brought Hellenism and, and, and introduced the Hellenistic period into ancient Near Eastern history. After Alexander's death, his empire was divided into smaller Hellenistic kingdoms. Right? The ones of greatest relevance to us are Ptolemaic Egypt and Seleucid Syria, because as you can imagine, Palestine is caught between those two great powers. So it's going to be fought over by those two great powers. So you have Egypt ruled by the Ptolemies, you have Syria ruled by the Seleucids. They're wrangling for control of the land of Israel that, that's lying between them. So the iron and clay feet of the statue in Daniel's dream represent these lesser Hellenistic kingdoms of Egypt and Syria that succeeded Alexander's empire and are a mix of Hellenistic and, and Eastern elements. The stone from heaven represents the future kingdom of God. It's going to come and destroy these godless kingdoms and fill all of the earth forever.